In our American Adventure series, we have frequently noted that the three great foundation stones of the American way of life are faith in God, constitutional government, and the private ownership economic system. When combined, they give us the structure from which has evolved a unique mechanism for human progress, for personal happiness, and for economic well-being. What about this mechanism that we call the American system? What makes it work? Why does it produce such good results for its people, vastly better than any other system? To answer these questions, let us trace the functions of the American economic freedoms right down into the life stream of our workaday life. Any list of human freedoms might well have up near the top the freedom to work at the occupation or calling of one's own choice. We have this freedom in America. How well does it work? Well, some of you college students are preparing yourselves for careers as teachers. You wouldn't want the government or anyone else to force you to take up some other occupation. You want to choose your own careers. All Americans have this free choice of occupation. We see nothing strange or even unique in this freedom but the people of many other countries think it is an amazing thing. Under socialism, there is an overall central economic plan drawn up and enforced by the government. The plan calls for the production of so much of this and that product and assigns so many workers. Chances are that sooner or later in a socialist country, you would be shifted to an occupation or a locality which you would not like. England's socialist leaders promised that there would be no regimentation or control of the workers. And yet, soon after socialism took over the English industries, the socialists enacted a law which provided government control over everybody's choice of occupation. Our freedom of choice and occupation makes it possible for Americans to enjoy their labor, which is a factor in our high productivity and our high living standard. An Iowa farmer who visited several weeks in Russia, came home to report that production per worker on the collective farms in Russia amounted to approximately one-tenth as much as that on American farms. He also reported that it requires two months labor for a Russian worker to earn enough money to buy a suit of clothes. A much better suit of clothing can be purchased by an average American worker with less than a week's earnings. Another American freedom that has an important economic influence is the freedom to dream dreams that may come true. Only in an atmosphere of freedom can the total brain capacity of an entire nation be harnessed to progress. Some of the most valuable contributions to our progress have been made by average Americans who put their brains to work in a country where everyone is free and even encouraged to try out any idea or contraption, no matter how crazy it may seem to others. It was this stimulating freedom that permitted Thomas Edison to envision and develop electric lights. Even though electricity had been in the presence of mankind for 6,000 years, no one had learned how to make an electric light until Edison, a below average student from an obscure family, evolved the idea and succeeded in making it work. Millions of products have come to the American market in the last half century. And behind each new product, there has been a free mind, dreaming, exploring, inquiring, probing, and creating. Our system inspires dreams and challenges 160 million people to dream, and thus to create, to produce, and to build. Closely allied to and complementing the freedom to dream is the freedom to compete. Under our American system, the dreamer does not have a monopoly on producing things. Anyone can go into business and compete with him. Since the first automobile was produced in America, over 1,500 companies have been organized to manufacture automobiles. Most of them failed. The best competitors, the best producers succeeded. Competition has kept each auto manufacturer busy trying to outdo the other. 
and attract more car buyers. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested in research and new manufacturing techniques to make today's car far ahead of the earlier models. What has happened in the automobile industry has happened also with the whole vast array of products on the American market. Another vital factor in the American production mechanism is the freedom to advance. The freedom of each person to improve his own position. Most of the present day industrial leaders have come up through the ranks of employees. They were ambitious, enterprising, industrious and free. Free to work for advancement. American competition, along with our freedom to advance, has developed the finest industrial and business management in the world. American management goes through a process of screening by competition. Incompetent management cannot survive the keen competition of our free market. Only the most capable, the most efficient, the most productive can remain at the top. This screened management means better jobs and a more secure future for employees and better products at less cost for the consuming public. The final factor in America's great economic progress is the freedom to invest. Not only is it the privilege of every American to invest his savings as he sees fit, but the incentive to invest is very great. This is evidenced by the fact that some 18 million Americans own corporation stock. The money they invest in industry is used for working capital, for building and expanding plants, and for the constant development of industrial tools. One of the most dramatic differences between an American industrial employee and his European and Asian counterpart is his tools. Where there is little capital for investment in plants and tools, a man's labor is not worth very much. This man, for instance, takes 10 days to move 10 gallons of kerosene 100 miles at a freight cost of 10 cents a gallon. An American railroad worker takes only two hours to move 100,000 gallons of kerosene 100 miles at a freight cost of one cent a gallon. The coolie makes 10 cents a day. The average American railroad worker makes 10 to 15 dollars a day. The American railroad worker has the benefit of a $20,000 investment in equipment. The coolie's equipment is worth only 10 cents. Better tools are being produced constantly in all phases of American industry, resulting in higher productivity per worker, in better wages, and in improved products for the consuming public. When our grandfathers were boys, Animals were doing 79% of the work in American production. Men contributed 15%, while machine power contributed about 6%. The output per worker at that time was about 27 cents per hour. Hours were long and wages were low and production was meager. Today, in contrast, Animals are no longer a production factor, except on a few farms. Men are contributing about 5% in American productivity, while machines are contributing 95% or more. The output per worker has multiplied many times, and wages have kept pace, largely through America's tremendous investment in industrial tools. For instance, it takes from 15 to $18,000 in invested capital to create each job in the chemical industry, $35,000 in the petroleum industry, and so on. Throughout our entire industrial system, there is an average investment of more than $10,000 per job. These five factors combine to make the American economic system the most productive in history giving the American people a far higher standard of living than that enjoyed by any other nation. And let us be reminded that the key word in each is freedom. Freedom to work, freedom to dream, freedom to compete, freedom to advance, and freedom to invest in the tools of production.
This has been the formula for our unparalleled achievement, the secret of our great national progress and our individual well-being. But let us remember that these freedoms are all in one bundle, and that if one should be withdrawn or should become inactive, then our freedom structure would be weakened and jeopardized. All Americans should clearly understand how each freedom works in our system and how vital each one is to our economic welfare and our happiness. Next week, we shall discuss the functions of profit in America's progress. But for now, 